Hi everyone, I'm Federico Magistri. Today I want to talk about our new paper, Contrastive 3D Shape Completion and Reconstruction for Agricultural Robots Using RGBD Frames. As the world population is expected to grow at a high pace, we need to produce more biomass than ever before. And we have to do it in a more sustainable manner. Phenotyping is one of the tools that can help us uh, achieve this goal. It is the task of measuring the visual appearance of a plant and therefore understanding and evaluate its performances. Now, phenotyping is done mainly manually by operator in the field, thus limiting the, the throughput that we can achieve with this tool. Robots, on the other hand, have the potential to boost phenotyping practices. A typical robot is equipped with sensor, like an RGBD camera, as you can see here in the image, that will produce data which is typically noisy and, uh, and partial, as you can see in the image. Now, our goal would be to turn this partial data into a complete 3D model of fruits, as you can see here on the bottom. This is a task that we as humans can do each day at a grocery store, for example, because we, during our life, have seen quite a few examples of sweet pepper, as you can see in this image. That means that we know how a typical sweet pepper will look like. And this is exactly what we want to do in this paper. We want to turn a partial uh, RGBD frame, as you can see here on the left, and turn it in a complete 3D model, as you can see here on the right. So we start by scanning a large amount of sweet peppers and strawberries with a high precision laser scanner, as you can see here in this video. Now, with the laser scanner you have just seen, we obtain a dataset of complete 3D models, as you can see here on the top. Then, for each fruit in our dataset, we, uh, we obtain RGBD scans on the same fruits, as you can see here on the bottom. Now, keep in mind that for each 3D model, we have different views, because this is a situation that will happen in the field. We will have one fruit and different uh, observations of the same fruit. Now, we align these two data sources into the same representation so that we can use both data in our framework. Now, the first question for us was how we can exploit the 3D model to learn a general fruit representation. So, we start by learning a simple decoder architecture where the input is a 3D complete point cloud and the output is a sign distant field representing that point cloud. We've done a step forward where we said how we can use this pre-trained decoder and use it to complete partial fruits, partial observation as they come fr uh, from a robot. So after training our decoder, we freeze it so that we know that the output will be a complete 3D model. And then we start training our encoder. Now, as you can see, the input is a partial RGBD scan and the output is a complete 3D mesh. So how exactly uh, we have done that? We start by defining one loss function on the latent vectors, so Z, as you can see here in this equation, and we just want all the latent vectors generated by encoder uh, to be unit norm. We define a second loss term on the reconstruction, on the output of our network, that works only on the visible part of the fruit. So we want the SDF, which is produced by our network, is as close as possible to the SDF that we can compute um, from the RGBD frame that we use as input. Now, the predicted SDF in the equation is S, while the ground truth or pseudo ground truth is S hat. Now, the third loss term um, is the one that we care the most about. As mentioned before, for the same fruit, we have different observations coming from different viewpoints. Now, we want that this different observation generate the same fruit. And we have done that by enforcing a contrastive loss on the latent space. Now, here on the top, we see that we, the latent vector Z coming from different observation of the same fruit should generate the same latent vector. While dif different fruits or different frames belonging to different fruits should generate different latent vector, and this latent vector should be as far as possible. This, this, is, mm, this is modeled by the delta here in the equation. To sum up, we train our encoder with a weighted sum of these three um, loss terms to turn a partial data into complete data. Now, um, up to now, we have seen that the 
pre-trained decoder and the trained encoder work on the same species. So we have trained our decoder on sweet pepper complete data and we have trained the encoder on sweet pepper partial data. Now, unfortunately, you cannot always have a data set to build a prior knowledge about a uh, the representation or the appearance of a specific species, but we want to have a general representation. So for us, our question was, okay, how we can turn this partial represent this general representation of fruits, sweet pepper in this case, to uh, and make it work for other species, for example, strawberry. So for in this case, we can just unfreeze the decoder and use the same training procedure. Now let's look at some results. As mentioned before, we have used two datasets, strawberry and sweet peppers. In the following, you will see the results when the pre-training and the actual training have been done using the same species. As you can see here on the left, our approach is com comparable with the best baseline for the strawberry and is slightly worse for a sweet pepper in terms of reconstruction accuracy, which is modeled by the comfort distance. The good news for us is that while the best baseline needs 40 seconds, more or less, to compute uh, a complete prediction, our approach only needs 4 milliseconds. This means that our approach can be used online on robot operating in the field. Now, here you can see an RGBD frame as it comes from the robot, and now you will, we will show you how we can generate 3D models from the fruit that you can see in the scene. To give you an idea on how our predicted model looks like, here we show on the left the RGBD that we use as input for the sweet pepper in this case, and on the right side we show the prediction of our best baseline and by our approach. As you can see, we uh, obtain comparable results um, where most of the errors on our, um, on our 3D models come from the bottom part of the fruits. And now let's move on on the training and pre-training done on different species. Um, as you can see here on the graph, adapting the network from one species to another is clearly beneficial. Um, this is more uh, visible for the, strawberry, for the strawberry than the sweet pepper, but we can still see uh, a clear benefit in adapting the, our prior knowledge. Again, here we, sh we show uh, an overview, uh, also uh, a clear depiction of where the errors are into our um, predicted 3D models. On the left, you see uh, the input strawberry fruits, and then on the right, you see the output of our model with and without the adaptation. Again, this pre-training was done on the other species, meaning that in this case, we pre-train with the sweet pepper data. Uh, as you can see, by adapting the pre-trained model, we can obtain shapes that look like strawberry, and this is especially uh, interesting on the, on the bottom case here, when the input was pretty sparse and partial. Now, to conclude, I hope that I show you how we can turn a partial uh, RGBD frame into a complete 3D model. I show you how we can learn prior over fruits leveraging high uh, precision point clouds, uh, and how we can use this prior knowledge uh, to complete noisy and partial input. I've shown you how we can uh, adapt prior knowledge coming from different species, and show you that our approach can work in online, given that it takes only four milliseconds to complete uh, a partial scan. That was all from my side. Thank you for your attention. If you want to dive deep in our paper, scan this QR code.